Dame Kathleen Lonsdale, president of the Melbourne Conference, worked under Sir William Bragg and in association with Sir Lawrence Bragg for a number of years. She was the first woman to become a vice president of the Royal Society and has contributed much to the study of crystals. Of course, most people don't know what crystallography really means. Uh, it's a bad name in a sense because they either think it has something to do with fortune telling or else that it's some branch of theology. <laughs> but <laughs> what it really is, is the study of solids. Now, anything that is solid, therefore, is a subject for our research. And that applies to the solids that we're made of our own bones, our teeth, the crystals that grow in our bones and that cause us so much discomfort or that grow like this in our different organs, kidney stones, gallstones, bladder stones, all these are crystalline in the sense that if you take the tiny particles of which they're made up, the atoms and molecules are regularly arranged inside them. Of course, on a very minute scale. Things that grow in our body that are solid, uh, they're the subject for a crystallographer to examine, or the things that a woman uses in the kitchen, saucepans, they're made of metals, which are made of small crystals conglomerated together, or the things that we eat, like salt and sugar, or the things that we have in our medicine cupboards, uh, even penicillin, of course, can be formed in, as crystals. And one of my colleagues, Professor Dorothy Hodgkin, got the Nobel Prize last year for her studies of the structure of penicillin and of vitamin B12, which is so important in the sheep rearing industry in Australia. Uh, and uh, I, I'm very proud of that because Actually, women have been traditionally interested in this particular subject, partly, I'm sure, because the patterns, the X-ray patterns that we obtain from these materials and that help to tell us just what the substances are made of are really very beautiful. Now, this is one that I've been studying, and I, I think it's rather a lovely pattern, don't you? I think it's aesthetically satisfying to be able to derive information from a pattern like this that is going to be useful to people. Of course, it wants a lot of mathematics, and uh, a lot of people are not very fond of mathematics, but nowadays the high-speed computers can do a great deal of that for us, and in fact, <laughs> crystallographers, I think, are one of the major uh, customers for computing time. Uh, here's another pattern that is not uh, the same at all, but which is in fact the pattern obtained from a kidney stone from a little girl in one of the London hospitals. Well, uh, I say that they're aesthetically satisfying. Some of my X-ray photographs have actually appeared in books on art. Uh, one, at least, was used as a design for a rose window by a very famous architect. So that, uh, uh, that's really quite another side of the work. I began as a girl to study mathematics at the university. Then I decided that I really preferred an experimental subject, and so I took my degree in physics. And then I wor went to work with Sir William Bragg, who was at that time the professor of physics at University College London. Of course, he had at one time been professor of mathematics and physics in the University of Adelaide. But uh, I worked with him off and on for 20 years. I say off and on because the off was the time when I had my three babies. But uh, I had to learn a good deal of chemistry in that time because a lot of the substances that whose structure we were studying were chemical materials and the um, amount of chemistry I knew when I began <laughs> was very small.
I was 19 when I came to work with him, but he was a he was then 60 years of age, and he was a charming man, very thoughtful, very interesting, and he was doing very active research at that time himself. It was a real privilege to have been trained under him. Sir William and Sir Lawrence, although he was then, of course, just William Lawrence Bragg, got the Nobel Prize together in 1915, just 50 years ago. And so I suppose Sir Lawrence is one of the few men who have the unique privilege of celebrating the jubilee of his Nobel Prize. Very interesting, too, that he'd only been studying physics for five years when he got his Nobel Prize. He began the study of physics at Cambridge when he was 20. He had already got a first-class honours degree in Adelaide University in mathematics at 18 years, which of course was extraordinarily young. The conference that I'm attending now, of course, on defects in solids, uh, makes it sound as if we were examining something which was wrong, but many of the really valuable properties of uh, materials depend upon the fact that the atoms and molecules, although normally arranged in a regular pattern, very often have a kind of disorder in that pattern which introduces electrical or mechanical properties which are useful in building or in building up uh, electrical apparatus, transistors,